The bankability is very dependent on the market. We see a significant growth in the market coming up with the demand growing. Uh, 2020 uh, is definitely one step. Along the way, we may be seeing this, uh, a growth by as, as much as 118 MTPA needed within the next five to 10 years. So with that, the development of the projects that are coming with it and the demand, when the demand is there, the financing typically helps. Uh, we need to make sure that we have the, uh, with the offtake and the financing, that helps significantly in getting those projects together. What we're seeing is that the cheap gas in North America uh, is definitely helping drive cheap natural gas in North America, is definitely helping drive a number of uh, projects in North America. But yet we're seeing areas where uh, coal gas turning into syngas, even uh, low quality coal uh, turning into syngas and turning into ammonia, helping really drive uh, how, gases are being, uh, how gases are fueling the future. What's also important is that we also, uh, renewable energy is definitely a big player and it's a player that we're gonna, we're watching all how it's gonna continue and how it will change over the years, especially when some of the government subsidies are removed. So when you look at that and you look at renewables are dependent more on natural wind or solar power, which have cyclical, so you either have to have a storage means of the power or you're going to have to use gas as a backup power to, to help manage the, the peaks and troughs. So gases are really playing a very important role. One is re reducing carbon footprint, second is better usage of our coal resources around the world in a more environmentally friendly way, but also in managing the peaks and troughs of what renewables come together. They're really a very important element of our fuel of the future. Small and mid-scale LNG are, have a role to play. However, they have challenges that come along with them. First, the scale of the projects give, give, a, give a challenge of the upfront cost and how you get to where the project cost return on investment is, 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 is becomes feasible. So the second thing is we need to make sure that we don't think of them as LNG projects. We need to relook at how we execute them in a way that is appropriate for small scale LNG because if we go at them with a large LNG mentality, we will be making that uh, solution or that is pro we need to provide to some of our clients more harder to bring to market. The third element is most of the clients that are relying on small LNG uh, are either from the power or transportation industry. And when you look at it from a power and transportation, the mentality change that is needed from the operator side and how to use the, the fuel that, and, and how to be able to adapt to it becomes an important. So the upfront capex is somewhat driven by how we execute them, how we think about them, as well as how the client operates them. So we need to that change in mentality and change in, in this uh, mental model, if you want. Uh, to be able to make them more, more, more present. I think the Houston being such a hub for gas as it has evolved over the last few years with really mega projects happening in our backyard with Sabine, Corpus, uh, uh, Cameron LNG and other projects happening really and some new projects coming up here in our backyard or north of us in Canada. We're really looking forward for great discussion and open communication and collaboration between contractors and operators to make sure we keep working on bringing this value to the market.